Hey there everybody, Don Evans here from WatchReport.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Orange Watch Company or OWC Mill Sub Diver. This one as you can see has the snowflake hands and no date. There are other variations that you could choose of this uh, including with a date, uh, sword hands, and um, there's also options between the bezel. This one happens to be ceramic and is loomed. I believe you can also get an aluminum bezel. And it also has two different movement options. You could opt for the upgrade such as this, which is the Soprod A10, which is a Swiss automatic movement. Uh, you know, basically uh, another movement that was made to compete with ETA and, of course, uh, Solita and the SW200. Or you can go with the Seagull option. Now, I am not exactly sure because I didn't research it um, mostly because I'm doing the review on the Soprod version which is eleven hundred dollars and I'll go over all the specs here in a minute the Seagull is an ST1812 automatic and I'm going to imagine that that is a much uh, less expensive option if you wanted to go that route because let's be honest eleven hundred dollars um, for what is somewhat a uh, sub homage and, and i'll get to that here in a minute when i show you more of the watch why i don't it's not exactly um an homage say or, or or a copy as like say a steinhardt may be or some of the other brands that are out there um steinhardt is another company though that is using so pride a10 movement and a lot of their um, premium line of watches that they're now calling so let's get into the specs you have a 40.5 millimeter case you have a 20 millimeter lug width and a non-tapering 20 millimeter bracelet a lug to lug of 51 millimeters or length of the case you do have a sapphire crystal, which is 4.5 millimeters thick, a ceramic loomed bezel, and you have an all stainless steel, very, 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 very solid case and bracelet. So let me give you a good look at the watch here all around. As you can see, your case sides are polished. Your top is all brushed as is the solid stainless steel bracelet and the bracelet matches the case the sides are high polished you will see you have drilled lugs and they do use hex or torx screws and both the screwdrivers um, you get two screwdrivers that are included so you could do the uh you know if you wanted to change this out to a strap and also for the bracelet now the bracelet is one-sided so the screw actually threads into the link it means the links are threaded on this side and the tools i don't have one of them in front of me but the tools are actually rubber tipped as well like it's like a rubber uh, coating so it makes uh, not only a sizing much, much easier, but it will, uh, you know, reduce uh, any scratches that you may uh, encounter, like as with normal uh, sizing of a watch. And one of the things, too, is I want to make sure everybody knows that these links are specific. First of all, you do have half links. This is a dual deployment clasp. And I'll go over that a little bit more um, as to why I think that's, um, well, a touch odd because it is a dive watch does include two half links so you can get a better uh, size there uh, for your wrist and I want to make sure that I point out that these are specific meaning that if you take a link out of this side it will not go back on this side because of the way that the holes are done so they are specific to each side of the bracelet take a look at the case back here We'll see six of those same screws holding down the case back. This watch is 300 meters water resistant. And you will also see 
see if I can get it to focus here, that there are screws for the bezel. Now those are very, very tiny screws that the way this bezel is attached to the case. And no, it does not come with the screw to undo the bezel. Or excuse me, the tool to unscrew, the screwdriver to unscrew the bezel. Now, a friend of mine and I were talking about this watch and how it differs from most sub homages. And one of the things we both initially felt is that with the shape of the case, the lines of the case, this high polish here, the way these lugs curve down, it reminds us of a you know, much more scaled down version of an Orient Saturation Diver, mainly due to the case, not really the bezel or, uh, of course, anything else. This watch is just about 13 millimeters thick, and it weighs in. Now, I have this sized for my 7.5 inch wrist. This weighs in at 200 grams sized. And what that means is, first of all, you have a four millimeter twenty, uh, excuse me, four millimeter thick, twenty millimeter in width, non tapering bracelet. This bracelet is extremely solid, and then that case is obviously going to be very solid on the walls on the inside. So you have a very very solid hefty watch here, in a forty point five millimeter size. So if you you know if you like a watch that you know is not 42 44 45 millimeters in more of that mill sub you know sub homage style in your regular 40 millimeter case size you will have one here personally um i like the no date option if you take a look at the website and you see the date option and you know dates like right between the four and the five i don't know this just looks a lot cleaner to me The bezel action is fantastic. And I got to say, really, overall, I have been very, very impressed uh, with this watch. It is, as I said, not like most of your sub homages out there, which really just are copying, you know, trying to mimic uh, Rolex down to a T. This one uh, takes a different approach to that now as far as the use of the dual deployant here as opposed to a dive watch clasp um, not sure what the choice is there for that um, you do lack you know being able to get those fine micro adjustments with a dive watch uh, clasp as I said you do have half links so you should be able to get a at least a little bit of a better fit you do want to wear this watch, you know, a little tighter, in my opinion, because it is so hefty. But overall, I got to say, um, what a fantastic job on this watch. Now, Orange Watch Company is out of Australia. This watch is assembled there. They also, they have a uh, the watch box that comes with this. It's called the Puzzle Box. It's a massive, heavy uh, watch box that you got to pry off basically with a knife. And it's like has the cutouts on all the edges like a puzzle. And then you open it up and there's three slats inside. And you got the watch in one, tool in the other. And uh, I can't remember what was in the other side. And it can kind of all come apart if you really were to pull it apart. Um, it's definitely a unique uh, box, and the watch was definitely well packaged and shipped. It's a really heavy box, and, and in my opinion, you kind of got to be careful where you store it because you don't want to drop it or bang it. A um, little bit of overkill on the box for me. Um, I don't have the space in here in my uh, light box to be able to show it to you, but check out the full review at watchreport.com, and you will see the pictures of that. Let me show it to you on my seven and a half inch wrist before I wrap up here. 
one of the things I like about this OWC is the fact that even though it's 40.5 millimeters, which is usually a little below what I, you know, 42 is usually my minimum. But because of the, the, the chunkiness of the bracelet, the non-tapering, and just, I don't know, a robustness to this case overall, you don't, um, it doesn't feel like a 40 millimeter a subwatch on the wrist, at least in my opinion. So I think for some that are like, oh, I wish this was at least 42 millimeters or so, I would say give it a chance. You, you might be pleasantly surprised on how this wears. So this has been a look at the OWC Mill Sub Diver with the Tudor Hands No Date. Check out the full review at watchreport.com. There will be a link in the description below. Leave a like or a comment here on YouTube. And as always, subscribe to our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This has been Don Evans for watchreport.com. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.